Good Friday evening, everyone. It is Weather for Weather Geeks time. We've got plenty to talk about this evening, including some changes, of course, to our uh, snow expectations for Saturday. We'll get into all those details, but first, just a real quick review of today, because it's nice to show a little blue sky on some of these time-lapse videos. You know, we've been in clouds for a lot of the year so far, but on this fifth day of January, finally, we saw an appreciable amount of sunshine today. Some fair weather high cirrus clouds in the mix as well as a nice sunset just after 5 p.m., out there this evening. All right, I, I looked back at, you know, the kind of the, the futility when it comes to snowfall in our area over the last couple of winters, and one stat that really stood out uh, in the calendar year 2023, the biggest one-day snow total for the calendar year was in January of 2023 at the Youngstown Warren Airport, 3.2. That's the biggest one-day total for the entire year. We're going to challenge that and even eclipse that several times, I think, in the next couple of weeks. Maybe not tomorrow, but uh, certainly we're going to have our chances for more than three inches in one shot as we go into mid-January. In the meantime, uh, the National Weather Service office in Pittsburgh did hoist winter weather advisories for some of our adjacent counties just to the east, including Venango and Butler in western PA, kind of the I-79 corridor and points to the east. Uh, Cleveland office and uh, the rest of the counties in the Pittsburgh office uh, not included in any advisories at this point, and I suspect that'll continue to be the case, although Pittsburgh might decide to add a few counties to that winter weather advisory before the night is through. It, of course, becomes a winter storm warning as you get off into kind of the meat of this system. Uh, winter storm warnings from the Blue Ridge Parkway up through central PA, up into the Hudson Valley in New York, and over towards uh, the greater Boston area as well. That's where we are expecting the highest snowfall totals. Here's a look at our storm this evening. Now, I'm recording this video at 7.14 Eastern Time, and it was raining in a lot of uh, Mississippi and the Tennessee Valley. And while there's not a lot of snow on the radar at this point, the air is certainly cold enough to support snow as this moisture continues pushing north and east. So I'd expect snow to break out overnight tonight in a lot of the lower and mid-Ohio valleys. So here's a kind of a breakdown of, of what we expect timing-wise on Saturday. Not only are our expectations for snow a little bit higher, but this whole system is looking a little bit faster as far as the onset of snow. So I think in some parts of our TV viewing area, it's going to start snowing as early as 11 or 11.30 in the morning. Um, for a lot of us, it'll be noon, 1 o'clock or so before the uh, snow really starts going in earnest. And once it starts coming down, it's going to come down at a pretty decent clip for a few hours. We might see rates of, I'll say, half an inch per hour for a couple of hours um, during the meet of this around, say, 2, 3 p.m. That'll kind of be when things are probably at their heaviest. But very quickly, I expect the snow to taper off and end towards the late afternoon and into the early evening. On our Saturday, flurries could then return later. Saturday night. So snowfall accumulation expectations. I showed you this graphic last evening and all these lines were pretty flat, of course, down towards the bottom, but with a subtle north and westward trend in the modeling. And the reason for that is this whole system is a little bit more amplified uh, than it looked like before. It looked like a very flat wave of low pressure before. Now it has a little bit more amplification to it, bending a little farther to the north and to the northwest, throwing a little more moisture to the north and northwest, and therefore well, we're not in the heart of this, certainly by any stretch of the imagination, uh, rather than just some candy coatings. I think a lot of us are probably going to end up with an inch or two worth of snow. Now, the afternoon run of the NAM goes a little bit crazy. We're going to discount that for the time being. You can see there's decent model consensus right down through here. One thing we have to keep in mind when uh, talking about snowfall accumulations for Saturday, a lot of uh, weather modeling that you can find on the Internet that meteorologists have access to, and even weather hobbyists subscribe to a lot of these model sites, um, a lot of them, uh, you know, graphically display snowfall uh, modeling based on 10 to 1 snow to liquid ratios. That's just kind of an average, of course. Sometimes the snow to liquid ratio is higher, sometimes it's lower. This is going to be a case where the, the ratios are a little lower, I think, than 10 to 1 for a lot of the duration of this. So we probably are going to see like 8 to 1, 9 to 1 maybe ratios because air temperatures are going to be around 32, 33. Pretty wet snow. Good for making a snowball, snowmen. Um, but not exactly the most efficient accumulating snow, uh, you know, unless the rates are hard enough. Now, when it snows hard, even if your ratios aren't that great, it can still stick pretty quickly, um, but it has to snow pretty hard. If the snow is light to, you know, moderate intensity, it has a little bit of a harder time accumulating. It, there's more compaction, in other words, when you have that uh, kind of... Uh, sticky wet stuff with low snow to liquid ratios. So here's a look at the region-wide snow map. Of course, the lollipop, the bullseye, if you will, will be from central PA. 
over towards the Hudson Valley and into New England. Now, as nearby as the I-79 corridor in western PA, I'm not going to be surprised if a lot of places get about three inches or so. I think in our TV viewing area, and if you're not familiar with our Youngstown TV viewing area, we basically cover five counties uh, straddling the Pennsylvania-Ohio border. And I think in our TV market, a, a slushy inch to two, two and a half will be pretty common. Now, could someone get three or so? Yes, I can't rule that out. But I think that'll be kind of an exception at this point. I think a lot of us are going to end up around two, on either side of two, two, two and a quarter, two and a half, one and three quarters, something like that. Um, at the end of the day, it's enough to cause concerns for some travelers Saturday afternoon. Now, main roads, especially if they've been treated, will be generally okay unless we have some real, a uh, real thump of snow for half an hour, forty-five minutes. Then even. Uh, the, the bad ratios and the marginal temperatures, those things can be overcome if the rates are high enough. And that'll be possible for a couple of hours in the afternoon. But for the most part, the general rule here is that it's going to be those secondary roads that probably aren't as tre treated as much, colder surfaces certainly. Uh, those will be the surfaces that you have to be especially concerned about for a lot of the afternoon. So again, the timing on this, uh, midday, uh, it'll start snowing, but already by four o'clock or so. I think the snow's trying to taper off, especially in Ohio. So this is going to be a, for, for any one location, this is going to be about a three to five hour event, a uh, real quickie. And by dinner time, and, and certainly by seven or eight, the snow's long gone, and we'll just have clouds for the evening hours. So if you're planning on being out and about after, say, 6 p.m., uh, we should be in, you know, pretty good shape, with the exception of any of those colder secondary roads or surfaces that picked up a couple of inches of snow and haven't been treated. Um, they could still be a little bit slick, but in general, there's not going to be much falling from the sky after about five o'clock. Now, as we head through the overnight, uh, this is a pretty, you know, pretty potent little disturbance coming our way on Sunday. So it's going to be kind of a snow globe kind of a day. You're going to look outside and see light snow falling for much of Sunday, but the the rates are not going to be as impressive as Saturday. Um, and overall, this will be a much lower impact day. It's going to look pretty. I mean, you know, snow is going to be falling from the sky for a lot of the day, but. Uh, this is the kind of thing we like in that it should be pretty low impact on our area roads. I'm expecting less than an inch of additional accumulation on Sunday. Remember, it's an inch or two, maybe a little bit more in some spots on Saturday, then a break, and then late snow returns by about daybreak on Sunday and probably accumulates less than an inch during the daylight hours on Sunday. The flurries then fade away Sunday night and we get a break in the action coming up on Monday before a potentially sloppy commute Tuesday morning. Uh, you know, if you've been following this video or weather forecast over the last few days. We've been focusing on Tuesday morning as a possible trouble spot with snow and sleet and freezing rain possible for a time early in the day, but I think there's going to be a pretty fast changeover to just plain old rain as we rise up into the 40s before the morning hours are through on Tuesday. Let's talk some about the medium and longer range because I'm, I'm becoming more and more impressed with the cold as we go deeper into January. This is today's 8 to 14 day outlook put out by the Climate Prediction Center. It's a slam dunk. It'll be a colder than average period up here. How cold is it going to be? I mean, really, really cold. Uh, you know, it's the heart of winter. It's hard to get anomalies that are super crazy. But, you know, some of this air that's coming into the Pacific Northwest at first, next Friday, next Saturday, you know, you look at some of these colors here. I mean, you know, we're talking, you know, anomalies here that are almost off the charts. You know, at least 30 to 35 degrees colder than average. And remember, the averages are at their coldest of the year. It's mid-January. Um, so really impressive stuff in places like Vancouver, Seattle, Billings, Montana, the Dakotas. That's where this cold is going to initially dump, and then it's going to start bleeding east. Now, the anomalies around here will never be that impressive, but just about the entire lower 48 will be enveloped in this cold Arctic air mass coming up in about, oh, say, 12 or 13 days. Um, I think this will be the coldest stretch of the uh, winter season so far for our area, even though it won't be as extreme as across the uh, Pacific Northwest. Um, this will come with opportunities for uh, some uh, wintry precipitation as well, because you know you look at today's uh, long-range precipitation outlooks from the Climate Prediction Center, and I like what they have here. This is the six to ten day, eight to fourteen day. Look at all the green on the maps here. So that accompanies the blues in the temperature department. That means several opportunities, I think, for some snow. We'll be keeping an eye on uh, next weekend as a possible trouble spot. Uh, the models are starting to pick up on a pretty potent system at some point next weekend. Not sure if it's a Friday night, Saturday thing, or maybe it's more Sunday. Uh, that remains to be seen, you know, one thing at a time here. We've got plenty to keep track of over the next few days, but bottom line, active, active period coming up over the next couple of weeks. Starting to think when I look at the longer, longer range that February will not be as active, although it could be 
cold in February. In fact, I think it will be cold in February. It may be a little less active with fewer chances for snow overall than the next two or three weeks here in the heart of winter in January. I'll do a video update on my YouTube channel and link to it on Facebook and uh, my other social media outlets Saturday morning as the uh, storm pushes in. So look for that Saturday morning. Thanks for watching Weather for Weather Geeks tonight and all week. It's nice to be back. Have a great weekend, everyone. I'll see you back here for more Weather Geeks on Monday.